LSU makes two free throws to get the lead in this game. Look at Erica White, the first one of the free throw line. She can't <laughs> wait. She's ready. It's 77% from the free throw line. She is number one on the books for LSU. This to take the lead. Got it! And now Van Chancellor will use his last timeout. That is stone cold at the free throw line. Isn't it though? We talked to Erica White on Friday, Mike. And I'll tell you this, you had the feeling that she would have liked to have tipped it up on Thursday night. That's how anxious she was. And she was the first player at that free throw line. When you get in that circumstance, you have got to want to be the one to take that shot. That's what you dream of as a kid. You go to the free throw line, you're sitting there, you're practicing it. And that's what you dream of. She delivers big time. Well, cold-blooded is, is exactly the way to describe it because those were huge shots. And everybody had trouble all year long now you've only got seven seconds it's enough time but it's certainly not a lot of time well it's not ideal and you can see they're making sure that they've got all their matchups and they do have defenders in the backcourt because you're just trying to make tennessee take some time here i think parker's going to get the ball in the inbound leblanc waiting for parker nice dish inside tip the follow is good Hornbuckle with the follow. Two tenths of a second to go. Are you kidding? Parker with a drive. The defense came to her. She passed to set up the layup. They missed that. But Hornbuckle was there. At six foot five, watch how much ground. Candace Parker covers in a short period of time. It's why you put the ball in her hands, because her strides are long, and she pushes the basketball out in front of her. So you inbound it. You got the time. She is two dribbles, three dribbles, four dribbles. She's covering a lot of ground quickly. Right to Anna Sicki. One good shot. Hornbuckle, two. She advances it so quickly, Mike, that Hornbuckle gets her first basket of the game on a offensive Amazing. rebound. Mm. Now they are checking the clock. It looked like the ball went through the net with either .5 or .4 on it. It ticked down to .2. Somehow it went back to .3. I don't know how that was possible, but it went down to two tenths of a second. Now they have the chance to look at the replay. The ball goes through the net is the definition of a field goal in college basketball, not through the rim. The great pass, a wide open, good solid contest by Ashley Thomas, but multiple white jerseys in the box, and you're right, there it is. If you let it go one more tenth of a second there, it's down to about six tenths. Maybe six. Now with seven tenths of a second, Doris, you're really limited after that. Well, you are, and here's what happened. He used his final timeout after the made free throw because he was trying to set his defense. Right. So now you don't have one. On the catch, you couldn't make a catch and call a quick timeout. So now in a very short period of time, maybe .8, .7 tenths of a second. You Looked like seven maybe yeah. would be the correct one. So you don't have time to do anything but tip. Catch and shoot. You could catch it. Can't make a move. Right. Three tenths. Let's see what they give them. They're keeping it at three tenths of a second? No, I don't think they've made a decision yet. Well, it is obviously more than point three. Yes, I would be stunned if they don't put now at least seven Now the ball is tenths. through with at least seven tenths. Now they put seven tenths on the clock. I think that is the right call. They got it right, and that's why they allow them to use the replay to set the clock. This is a near impossible situation. The best you can hope for is put it in Sylvia Fowles' vicinity and see if she can't see tip if it she in. can tip it. Tip it in. They're not guarding the inbound. They're going to want to make the long throw. It's picked off, and Tennessee has survived.
And for the fifth year in a row, LSU's dreams are crushed. They get to the final four, and they cannot win. This year, they were held to 46 points. Extraordinary that you could win a game at this level, scoring just 47 points. Sylvia Powell's brilliant career at LSU is over. The two combatants, a hug, mutual respect, if not affection. They'll be seeing each other at the next level, won't they? No question. Pat Summit has found a way to do it throughout her brilliant career. If you need a miracle at the end, she can draw one up on the sideline for you. And how sick to her stomach would Nikki Anasicki have been uh, if her missed shot would have cost them the game, but the play of the game was Hornbuckle right there to tip it in under a second to left. Oh, here's Holly Rowe. Guys, that's the first time since 1982 Tennessee did not score 50 points in a game. These ladies weren't even born yet. How hard was this battle tonight? It was a tough battle. LSU's a great team. Uh, we're both defensive-oriented teams, and it was a hard-fought game. But my teammates pulled it out. My teammates pulled it out. For you, Alexis, you were scoreless in this game. You were struggling all night. Pat Summit kept challenging you at every timeout. How did you finally hit the game winner? <laughs> You know, I couldn't make a shot all night, like you said, but honestly, that's that's the only shot that mattered, was the one at the end of the game, and I just thank God that he gave me the strength to stay positive, and, and we came out on top. Candice, we got to ask you, you started out a little tentative, but how did the shoulder respond through the course of the game? Shoulder's fine. I'm proud of my teammates. They really pulled us through tonight, and we're going to the national championship game. All right, and for you, senior Alexis Stanford now, your champ, you, you played them earlier in the year. They beat you in overtime. How do you approach the game? With a new game plan. They, they did a great job when we played them earlier. Earlier in the year, high low, Jane Appel and Candace Wiggins stepped up big. Their whole team is playing great, so we got to go back and prepare tomorrow and get ready for a hard fall game. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, the two All Americans did what they're supposed to do fouls, 24 points, 20 boards. Parker, 13 points and 15 rebounds. What a game. It may not have been pretty, but down to the wire it was, and Tennessee won it. 47 to 46. So Stanford, after knocking off Connecticut, will meet Tennessee for a national championship on Tuesday night. Once again, the final score, LSU losing to Tennessee 47 to 46. Next on ESPN at Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, and your exclusive home, the NCAA Women's Championship. Along with Doris Burke, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew. This is Mike Patrick. Join us Tuesday night, Stanford, Tennessee at 7:30. Now let's take you to Sports Center.